Hey guys, it's Jeff from Everything Plants. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be doing a houseplant tour. As some of you have asked for this, uh, as it's been a while since I've done one, I'm going to just basically be doing this living room area. So the last video that I made, some of you had made suggestions of maybe not going so fast, maybe doing a little more explanation. So I'm gonna try and spend a little more time with each plant and not kind of rush through it. So I'm gonna start off with my uh, Neon Pothos here. Not only are these super easy plants to care for, but they just uh, stand out kind of amongst the rest of the plants with their vibrant uh, bright green and almost uh, yellow leaves. They come in a little bit on the yellow side for the newer ones and then they kind of, uh, I guess, darken up to this uh, lime green. Right behind it here is a Marble Queen Pothos. This one uh, specifically is a cutting from a larger plant. I uh, propagated it in water and then potted it up in uh, some soil here. So I'm trying to let these two plants kind of cascade down uh, the side of the piano. Over here is my Scandapsis uh, Jade Satin. This one is still really hard to find around here. It's uh, extremely popular and for obvious reasons, it's absolutely beautiful. It's finally putting out uh, some new growth. It's starting to uh, trail down. This one basically did nothing for probably around six months, well, six to eight months kind of thing. And it's finally putting out some new growth. So my plan is eventually to propagate it so I can uh, make more plants or even stick them back in this pot here. But I'm kind of worried because with my previous experience of propagating scandapsis, they're a little bit on the tougher side. They take a long time in water and I'm really worried that if I put it in water, they will not grow roots and it'll basically just rot. So I might try something different this time. I might get a propagation box and then try rooting it in maybe like a perlite this time. Over here is the uh, Scandapsis Exotica. It's a very similar sized leaf to the uh, Jade Satin. It's got like a, a silvery pattern on it with the larger leaves. They're, uh, they're beautiful. This is one of two plants that I have. The other one's in my bedroom. Over here is the Aglaenema Cutlass. I've been kind of on an Aglaenema buying spree. They're super easy plants to care for. I had some difficulty with uh, the variegated color varieties, but uh, just the solid green leafed ones are uh, very easy to care for. Uh, this one has a very kind of long, narrow shaped leaf with kind of these uh, like silvery green um, highlighted by uh, some darker edges or dark green on the leaves. This one is super common. This is the Emerald Beauty. The only thing it does is when it needs water, the leaves will get a little bit droopy. They typically don't get like crispy or anything like that, but if you really underwater it, you might get a yellow leaf or two. Uh, otherwise, just give it some water and it'll perk right back up. These leaves are uh, absolutely beautiful. One plant that can be a little more finicky when it comes to watering, I guess underwatering or overwatering, is the Diefenbachia. This one specifically is the camouflage, and you can see it's got some crispy edges and leaves. Uh, most times these will require a little bit more humidity. So right now I have mine at 46%, so that's all right. But I think my problem was I was in inconsistently watering this one. I would let it dry out too much and then give it some water. Whereas now I've been trying to pay a little bit more, I guess, closer attention on watering it a little more frequently just so it doesn't get so dry to the point where it gets these crispy edges. Here's a couple more Aglaenemas or Chinese evergreens. This is the common uh, Silver Bay. This one is a I don't know, I just really like the leaves. Even though this is a super common variety, it still does not disappoint. It looks really, really good, kind of clumped together with some other houseplants. This one here is the Aglaenema Silverado. This is a newer variety for me. I saw this was one plant in the plant shop, so I had to buy it and it's now getting a new leaf. This one, this one is beautiful. So it's got kind of the same silver coloration on the leaves, but this one is just a little bit of a different pattern. It's got more of kind of like that medium uh, tone to, uh, to the green there, uh, kind of a silvery green. And then again, highlighted by uh, kind of the darker green around the edges. Down at the bottom here is another Diefenbachia. This is the, I believe it's called a Corsii. This is uh, pretty similar to the Tiki, but I think there is more darker green uh, kind of throughout the leaf with some kind of white speckling there, but these leaves are beautiful. So this is kind of my favorite little plant corner. And I do have 
a little girl bulb as it's uh, quite a distance away from the south facing window so it gets lots of bright light but this is probably more of like a medium light location so I'm just kind of supplementing it with a, uh, a grow bulb there just so it uh, it gives it a little bit more light. So moving closer to my south facing window I have my ficus plants over here as well as some aglaenemas on the bottom but here's Pickles. She hasn't been in any videos for a while. He, she likes her little bed in the, uh, <laughs> in the little jungle here. So this one here is the Ficus Elastica Taniki. Uh, I've had this one for probably a year and a half now, I think, and it's getting a bunch of new growth, I think. Oh yeah, here's a couple of leaves. Uh, this one, I don't know, the, the camel leaves are just uh, absolutely beautiful. I've had this in a few videos now and it still does really well for me. It, uh, it must have a lot of bright light, so that's why I have it close to the south facing window there. And uh, yeah, it's just done really, really well for me. Over here, along with the Jade Satin Scandapsis, is probably one of my favorite plants. This is the Ficus Elastica Melanie. This plant in particular, it's more of like a tree-like structure, but compared to the Taniki and some other varieties, this is a smaller leafed ficus like this one like they're pretty tiny compared to I don't know if you can see um, they're probably about half the size and they are a little more I guess uh, compact and condensed this one here is my ficus elastica just regular green one I had this one just as a small cutting probably about a year ago and it has grown tons and look at the size of these new leaves like just absolutely massive and then you can see compared to the uh, uh, melanie here just uh, yeah just blows it out of the water. This one is absolutely beautiful. Look at this new leaf. I'll rotate it around so you can see. I love the bright green color of this one. And again, this one you can't really find anywhere. You find uh, like the burgundy color one, but uh, these uh, lighter green ones, I, I've never seen them in any stores around here. So with all these ficus plants, um, I'll, I'll be doing a video, or like a care video for these ones, but just make sure you have it in bright light, otherwise it's not gonna do very well. Um, bright light and just obviously let it dry out. So moving on down to this one here, this is the ficus elastica burgundy. This is a super common variety. I'm just growing this one out into like a tree-like structure as well. I have this smaller one here, which I'm using as kind of like a little experiment plant. You can see right at the top or tip of the stem there, a little branch is coming out. I chopped the top off just to kind of do a little trial for this one. Super dirty leaves. Yeah, I gotta clean them, but I just wanted to see if I can get it to branch out. And so far it's branching in one area that I can see. Okay, so moving on over back to here, these are some aglaenemas that I have placed on the floor. Uh, this one right here is the Golden Madonna. Uh, where's that newest leaf? This one. Like, look at these leaves. Such beautiful variegation on them. I'm just gonna pull it back this way. Back here is one that I've never really heard of until about three months ago. So this is a newer plant. This is the Christina Maria. Christina Maria? Christina Marie. It's got kind of that silvery green leafed uh, pattern as well. Just absolutely beautiful. It's a little wonky right now. The leaves are just kind of spread out everywhere. And this guy back here, very similar to the Cutlass, but a little bit of a different color on the leaves. And I'm not too sure which variety this is. I think it might be the Romeo, I'm not too sure. Moving over to the plant table back here is my huge Pilea peppermioides. I did uh, make a care video about this one, sharing some tips on how to get it into a large plant like this. Like it's huge. A couple months ago, it was below the TV here. Now it's uh, coming up above it. So I don't know if I'm gonna have to move it or if I'm gonna have to chop it. I have a bunch of propagations on the table here. Uh, these are some Hoyas that I'll talk about later. I got uh, four different uh, growing mediums, some sphagnum moss, some dirt, soil, whatever, perlite, and some leca. Over here is a black pagoda lipstick plant that I'm propagating in water. So I have a little container right there. Um, back here is one Raffida for tetrasperma. These are two cuttings in there. Uh, this leaf is a new sprout. It's getting a new little sprout from down there. And then this one I have propagated previously. And you can see uh, this newest leaf kind of sprouted out on the side of the plant. So, and it is from this plant right here. This one I'm letting kind of trail upwards. So I did cut this plant 
these cuttings are the lower portion of this one which I rooted in water and, uh, and then put them into some soil. Here is just a single stem uh, Ficus elastica melanie, or melanie, taniki. This one is another trial plant for me. It's uh, pretty close to a south facing window. It's getting plenty of sun, maybe like one or two feet from the window. And they come out in these uh, uh, red tinged leaves. Here is my philodendron birkin. This one's been in my collection for a while and this is one that has survived thrips from last year. Basically all my other philodendrons uh, were eaten up by thrips and I got rid of them. So this is one that has survived that, uh, I guess infestation. It wasn't even really infestation. It just, there was a few thrips that I found and they seemed to really hone in on the uh, philodendrons, but this one has survived. And uh, this, is the, uh, this is the newest leaf. This one, it's almost all white. And then it's got another new leaf coming in. So my plan for this one is to eventually propagate it as well. Once it uh, grows tall enough, I'm going to kind of snip it off at, um, at one of the leaf nodes with some aerial roots and I'll propagate this one, making some more plants. This is my Ficus triangularis variegated. Um, yeah. This is a pretty cool looking plant. I didn't realize how small these little leaves are. They look like little paddles. Pretty tough to care for, I would say. Um, I really have to keep an eye on watering for this one. And even, I think these like a little bit more, I guess, higher humidity. I did uh, propagate this one. Where is it? I got a cutting right here, uh, propagating in some water with some more uh, tetraspermas as well as some exotica. Like I said, these ones are really hard to root. These have been in water for a couple weeks now and nothing. Like it's got little aerial root nubs, but it's not producing any new roots. So that makes me worried. Back here is another Chinese evergreen, Aglinema. This is the green papaya. It's got uh, like a center red vein with some kind of lime green and dark green leaves. The uh, stems themselves are pink. This is, uh, this is a beautiful one too. It's just chilling out on the side of my south facing window. This one, uh, it was uh, propagated off of my main plant. So I basically snipped the top off. Um, the main plant is now gone because I found thrips on it as well. So tossed that one out, kept this one and it is constantly, or it's getting new growth and it's doing really well close to my south facing window. Here's another couple little propagation projects that I have. This is a, a Hoya propagating in a bag. I have uh, a couple of ZZ plant leaves in there that I'm trying to grow into a new plant. Got two uh, Raven ZZ and just two regular. Here is um, some Sansevieria propagations. You can see it's finally getting some roots. So you just stick it in some water and eventually it grows into a new plant, but one thing that uh, no one ever told me is that this takes absolutely forever. It takes like nine months. So I have one right here. This is my Sansevieria Whitney that I propagated almost a year ago, and it's finally getting a couple new sprouts, I guess. It's got another one down there. So it does take a long time. So if you are propagating these, be prepared to wait a long time. Here is another jade plant that I took off of uh, kind of the main plant I'll show here in a second. Yeah, I just recently did a uh, couple pruning videos of my jades and you can see it's getting uh, lots of new leaves where I made the prunes or where I made the cuts. Over here is my little cactus succulent bowl. I did propagate my Echeveria purposorum with some uh, leaf cuttings or just uh, from the single leaves. So I just broke it off this plant and uh, potted in some soil. Now they're getting their own new little plants. Got three of them in there and a cactus. This is my Euphorbia white ghost. Over here in my little propagation container is another Ficus uh, triangularis. Uh, this one was propagated in water. I'm just putting it in this little humidity dome just so it uh, can grow a little bit quicker. Here's my kind of larger jade plant. I just did a prune on this today. So I cut off a number of branches that were kind of hanging over the edge. Down below that is my Syngonian white butterfly. This one has done really well. So it gets maybe some direct sunlight, but it's kind of filtered uh, from being underneath the plant stand. But I think it looks absolutely beautiful. This one you can find for like five, ten dollars pretty much at any big box store, Walmart plant store. 
I'm gonna show the bottom here what it looks like. It's looking kind of laggy, but it, uh, it's not drooping or anything like that. It's growing upwards towards the sun. I did take a uh, little cutting. I do have a plan for this one. Once it finally roots or once it finally starts to grow some roots, I'm actually gonna put it in my ficus elastica melanie and I want it to kind of vine up or trail up into this plant and hopefully, I don't know, just see what it does um, in this kind of bare open spot. So up here, here is the Hoya Matilde. I have a, uh, ooh, I think a bird just flew by there. This is my Crimson Queen. And then this is a Hoya Rebecca, and it's actually flowering right now. Down here is just a couple more, uh, I guess, uh, previous succulent or jade plant propagations. Here's another one and some uh, Purposorum leaves. Here is the plant that I uh, recently did a pruning video about. Again, this is my jade plant, and it's getting new growth, new branches in basically every spot that I cut. So you can see right there, I pruned and it's getting uh, some branches. So this is kind of what to expect. It might look a little bare on top for the first little bit, but once it starts to grow and push out new leaves, um, then it looks, uh, I don't know, it just looks like super cool when it starts to fill in and get, new, uh, get some new branches. Here is my Gollum Jade. It's uh, again, uh, similar to the Jade plant, but these have like little uh, cylindrical type leaves. They look like little fingers. This one's about uh, two years old, maybe a little bit older than that. Back here is my Hoya Australis Lisa. It has flowered for me uh, this year. These leaves, I like how big they are, this one. Oh, they're a little bit flimsy, might need some water, but um, this is an absolutely beautiful plant. And the new leaves come in when they are given a lot of light. They come in in this red, red, kind of a deep red color. Here's my Desert Rose. It's currently flowering. This one's gonna fall off. But uh, the flowers are, well, obviously kind of like a pale yellow. Yeah, I really don't have much to say about this one other than it's, uh, it's a pretty cool looking plant. It's got a fat little trunk, a very interesting type leaves. Oh, I just think it's a cool, cool looking plant. Don't worry about the crispy edges. I've, uh, I think I had it too close to the south facing window. I had it on the ledge there, but I pulled it back. All the new growth seems to be doing much better than uh, previously. See like these newest leaves, they're not uh, all crispy. So I think it was just getting a little bit too much sunlight. Here's another jade plant again. I got a few of them and it's getting some new growth uh, after pruning it. Back here is my Hoya Sunrise. This one is just putting out uh, some new flowers like crazy. It's got a bunch of peduncles on it. I'll put it down here. It gets these uh, beautiful red coloration on the leaves when it's sun stressed. So it's got a peduncle there. One here, it's gonna get flowers. It's got one that's finished there. Uh, another one here. Looks like it's gonna be flowering right there soon. So focus, nope. And I think there was one more. Oh, oh yeah, right up here. A couple areas where it's flowering. Back here is a uh, pearls and jade pothos. I'm just trying to get it to kind of climb up. I did just cut it out of its original pot and uh, stuck in some water, so I'm gonna root it up again. I just want these leaves to grow upwards. That way they get uh, larger as they grow. Not much else to say about that. Here is my jade pothos. It's in my Wally Grow. This one grows like crazy. Uh, when I first put it in, it didn't have any of these trailing vines. They've since, like within the last couple months, just uh, pumped out a ton of new growth, and now it's finally kind of trailing, cascading down, and I think it looks awesome. Here is my Monster Peru. Um, I did recently make a care video about this one, and now it's finally getting a new leaf. Here's my, I guess, combination pothos propagation project. I got five different types of pothos in this one, and I potted them all up into one pot. So it's got the Marvel Queen, the Neon, the Jade, the Golden, and the Pearls and Jade. This is the Peperomia angulata, or the, what is this one called? The Beetle, Beetle Peperomia. Here's the newest growth on this. I just like how, again, the bright kind of lime green. Here is my Mona Lisa lipstick plant. This one I did uh, propagate from the main plant. I stuck in some soil, I propagated in water, stuck in some soil once it got some roots. And uh, yeah, just uh, waiting until this one 
uh, establishes its roots and puts out some new growth. That's a few areas where it's getting some leaf dieback, but that's okay. Here is my Peperomia prostrata or the string of turtles. This one is awesome. This one I absolutely love. I think it looks pretty cool and it's finally cascading down. I've propagated this one a number of times as well. Oh, it's got a, I didn't realize how far down it was coming now. Now moving on down to some of these Hoyas here. Uh, this uh, Parasitica, Parasitical, where is it? Uh, these leaves, I don't know, they just got like huge all of a sudden. This one here too. And they have a little bit of a splash on them, but just absolutely massive leaves. Here is the Hoya Chelsea. Um, I do have labels for all my Hoyas. I did make a video about that previously. You can go check that video out if you want, which is this one. This is the Fitchy Eye. Uh, yeah, I don't know what these ones are back there, but I'm pulling them out. They, uh, I don't know. They look awesome. <laughs> what else to say? I'm kind of running out of things to say. Here is my Polyneera, and I'm going to show you. Oh, geez. It's a tough thing about making these videos. I feel like I'm just kind of rambling on and running out of things to say. So this is my uh, Hoya Polyneera. I put this on Instagram today and I was actually just uh, picking it up just to kind of look at it and see where I can propagate it. And then I noticed it's starting to flower just at the kind of underside of the leaves here. So that was quite a pleasant surprise this morning, but these leaves are, uh, are pretty stunning. They're, I believe the fishtail Hoya as well is what it's called. And it's a fairly thin leafed Hoya, so that was kind of surprising when I first got it. I thought it would be kind of like a, a thicker leafed one, but it just sits at the very back of my plant shelf, tucked in there and seems to like it. It's constantly putting out new growth and obviously it's flowering. So got a couple more back here. This one is such a cool one. It's got uh, some of the newer leaves are a little bit on the fuzzy side. This is the Finlay Sonii. Here is my Hoya fungi or fungi. So yeah, obviously I got a lot of Hoyas. Down here is just a bird's nest Sansevieria. Uh, here's another Sansevieria as well. I can't remember the name of this one. It's got, uh, I don't know, some pretty cool colors on it. I'm just, I'm completely running out of things to say. Here is another Aglaenema Silver Bay. This one I have uh, just kind of on the floor of the south facing window and it gets kind of that, um, it gets bright, I guess uh, maybe a little bit of direct sunlight from the east in the morning. It uh, kind of shines down on the leaves. Don't see any leaf burn or anything like that. So I think it, uh, it definitely likes this location. Yeah, it's, uh, it's doing really well here. Here is, oh, just literally caught a spider midair. That was weird. Anyways, um, so I'm going to kind of finish off with uh, these two here. This is the Diefenbachia Camille, I believe. This one, uh, it did get spider mites and I had to cut it back. Basically lost all its leaves. Now it's uh, finally, uh, I guess, rehabbed and doing well. It's getting a new leaf. Hoping it gets back to a larger plant. And then down here is my Philodendron Golden Goddess that I again made a video of. I uh, chopped off one of the main stems. I'm propagating it in Lekka. Oh, just trying to make another plant. And I'm gonna show you this one where I made the cuts. It is now branched out. You can see it's branched out in two spots there. This is where I made the cut recently. And you can see it's already starting to get a new little branch or bud on that side. But yeah, if, oh, there's a new one right there too. So it kind of uh, branches out in multiple areas when you make a cut from the top. It basically sends a signal to the plant to uh, push out growth uh, laterally. So uh, pushing out branches instead of one long continuous stem. This is a Bambino uh, fiddle leaf fig. So a smaller variety, a more compact condensed um, fiddle leaf fig. And I just kind of plopped it in this corner and it's, uh, it's like in the area so far. So that's gonna be pretty much it for this uh, living room house plant tour. I do have like a bunch of Hoyas up here. I'm not gonna run through all those as I've done them in the past. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of what uh, my small little living room area looks like. If you have any comments or questions about any of the plants in my collection, please leave it down below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, uh, please like it, share, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to this channel. I really appreciate the support. Thanks again uh, for watching my videos and all the comments and stuff. So take care, everyone. Hey, where do you think you're going? Want to go outside? Okay. Okay, bye.